So today we are playing with evaporated milk in soap and we are going to be adding it to the lye solution because this is the best place to put your weird stuff to show ultimately what it can do, whether or not it's a good idea within your soaps. So you have a better idea of what it's going to do if you put said, you know, addition into your soap batter or your soap oils. This one is definitely crazy. It got really, really thick and syrupy and I am getting ahead of myself. So I will tell you more about the soap that we are making today, why I still think it's awesome and all of the things in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for another round of weird milks in lye solution soapy things. And today, as I said, we are playing around with evaporated milk. Now, what is evaporated milk? Well, evaporated milk is going to be the canned stuff that you find in your pantry, which is why I decided to do this in the first place. I was actually cleaning out my stock in my pantry and, you know, auditing everything so I can get more, you know, stuff to refill. You get it. You understand how life works. And I came across some cans of evaporated milk that have been in there for a very long time. I'm talking like eight years and I don't ever use evaporated milk. I don't know why I have it in my pantry. I'm going to assume that it's for either one rogue recipe from like my grandma or something that I just haven't made or perhaps food storage because maybe that's why you have evaporated milk. Anyway, I'm not sure, but I saw it here and I went, cool, weird that it still has a shelf life, A. Two, I'm gonna go ahead and try it in some soap. And so that's what I did. Evaporated milk is primarily going to be a condensed version of your milk fats, right? So they get everything up to temperature and they are essentially boiling out the majority of the water. Well about 60% of the water, which they then replace with more water to actually can it and package it for your consumption at home. So that's always a little bit interesting, but because it does have more milk solids, you are going to be getting more proteins. You are going to be getting a slightly higher amount of fats and all of the jazz. And so it should perform different than what you would expect within your vitamin D soaps. But while I was expecting the addition of the fat content and the addition of the protein content, I just dealt with coconut milk soap yesterday, right? With a high fat content. And so I thought, no big deal. It's basically going to be a very normal, you know, lye solution. It was not by any stretch of the imagination. It was weird. And the soaps ultimately ended up weird. And I want to talk to you about that and whether or not that means that the soaps are unsafe to use. So let's get to the making and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And we can, you know, discuss all of this and break down what this all means. So we are doing evaporated milks today and here it is. We are doing a carnation milk and evaporated milk within our soap and we will be using the evaporated milk as a substitute for 100% of the water within the solution. And the big difference between evaporated milk and regular vitamin D is, as I was discussing before, that it is a milk that is canned. So all the jazz, you can keep it in your pantry, all the things, but it has uh, about 60% of the water content has been removed through heating. And so what that's doing is that it's concentrating the milk solids and all the proteins, which should result in a creamier and thicker you know, texture. But as you can see there, there's like, it's not a lot different. It's still a very liquid, you know, product or whatever. It pours a lot like milk, even with those solids that settled at the bottom of the can. And so I did some research on all of this and it does look like evaporated milk while yes, it does condense and really provide more milk solids and proteins in a thicker form. It is then effectively diluted with more milk, with more water before repackaging. And so there's that. I'm not 100% sure what that means overall as far as whether or not evaporated milk is any 
different than vitamin D milk just on face because again you're adding back water to the concentrated or to the concentrated milk solids and so that was confusing as supposed I guess it's supposed to have a creamier like taste to it I have no clue anyway what I did find within soap baking is that it definitely soaked a whole lot different than the regular vitamin D milk, the pasteurized milk that we had tried before, as we can see here. So first up, the color was already, you know, very, very yellow and all the jazz. But then when I went to go stir it in, I immediately had these crazy chunky bits and the lye solution immediately got very, very dark. And as I'm stirring in all these chunky bits and everything, A, it got really hot, a lot hotter than any other milk that we've been playing with for any of this. I think well over 200 degrees during this process right here. And two, it smelled. I do not know if I have mentioned it at all within this milk series, but it's very important to know that when you are putting milk, especially animal milks, into your lye solution, it smells like ammonia. It is so unpleasant. And this one was even more so. Okay, and I'm just going to show you here, the outside of this carafe actually burned me, which was not fun. found it kind of weird. It was only 85 degrees, and it was burning the crap out of me. But inside, it's 186 degrees, um, about five minutes after pouring, after actually doing the lye solution. So, as you can see, really, really hot. So what I did is I went ahead and I heated up the oils for this particular recipe. Same oil blend that we were using for all of our milks, so we can test the lathers against each other put in all of the kale and clay. The oils themselves were heated to around 105 degrees. The lye solution, when it was all said and done, was going to stay at around 100 degrees, 120 degrees perhaps. I'm soaping it hot. And I am also going to be using a scent from uh, Sierra Candles that I have not tested yet because it does discolor, which is a lush dupe for vanillary vanillary i don't know how to pronounce it anyway it's going to discolor because i knew that there was no shot that this particular lye solution was going to actually get just pure white so i'm like why not just lean into it but look how sludgy that is so right off the bat while i may not understand how evaporated milk is you know actually intrinsically different than vitamin d milk just reading about how it's made i can definitely tell that there is a huge difference just by looking at how the lye solution is performing within the soap like that was so sticky and thick and that is the lie that's the chunk remember with the coconut milk soap we had the the chunky bit and everything it all just plopped in and people are saying that maybe that was the guar gum within all of that in my research, it looks like there's not enough of uh, any sort of thickener to have made this kind of a difference, but that looks like a, you know, like one of those hamburger patties that you get, the, the frozen ones or whatever, you know, like that is wild. And so I'm going to go ahead and say all of the extra concentrated milk solids and proteins and whatnot are, well, the resulting in that or it's food. It weirdly looks odd it really does you know a lie is used in food all the time so perhaps it was it would have been edible i have no idea what i'm going to do is go ahead and mix it up and i think what we do know with all of this since the last soap that we played with the last vitamin d soap we played with at the end of it it was a completely white bar but it had all these little flecks when i had not put in any any exfoliants right and so we surmise that perhaps it's the milk solids that overly burned and as we can see here, as we're mixing all this in and really trying to get all of those, those big chunks that looked again like a hamburger patty mixed into this overall batter, we can see that there are flecks, that it's very unlikely that these are going to actually work themselves out in the final product. And we are definitely, well, likely going to be seeing that in the finished result. And so I'm thinking high heat, over 200 degrees, these milk fats definitely burned these solids and that's what we are dealing with we are looking at actual scorched milk solids now what does that mean overall within the soap um ultimately i don't think it really means anything an aesthetic it's definitely going to be an aesthetic thing for sure am i concerned that there's anything that there is any lie bound up in it there wouldn't be any reason for that because the milk solids are still probably going to 
work out in some fashion. And the lie solution, the lie is going to want to get to all of the rest of the, you know, all the rest of the oils, the fatty acids, in order for saponification to occur. So I'm not thinking that that's going to be the case. Now, if you notice, I did soap this. Uh, I got it just to an emulsion. So I did not mix it very long at all before pouring it. I wanted to soap it just at emulsion or even a near emulsion to ensure that this wasn't going to get overly hot or thick, like with my coconut soap. So those were so freaking thick, you know? And so this is pouring a lot better. If you wanted to do that this way with all of the bad decisions that were made, sure, soap it cooler is what I would say. So you don't have to sh soap it at a near emulsion because that is something that I would suggest is going to be a more advanced method. You should definitely get a lot of soaps under your belt before you start playing with near emulsion soaps just to ensure that everything is well mixed and you're not going to end up with lie heavy pockets or any of your scents or whatnot kind of falling out of the solution and creating like an oily gloppy mess. Anyway, this particular soap, I don't know that the, as we can see, everything's really basically broken up uh, pretty well uh, within all of it. So I don't know that we'd be worried about lie heavy pockets. Of course, I am going to test this, but just off the bat, I don't see why I should be concerned about this being a lie heavy soap. It is certainly going to be an ugly soap and I am still worried at this moment that it's still going to smell like ammonia because even with the addition of a very strong, very potent vanilla scent, it still smelled pretty bad. But now let's go on to the reveal and the test. Okay, so this is about 18 hours later and first up it comes out of the mold just beautifully. None problems whatever with releasing from the mold. I did talk about that in the coconut milk video from the can that these particular molds, they're so thick walled that I usually have problems getting my soaps out and I have to wait a, a few additional days. And again, this was about 18 hours later. They're coming out without any problems at all. There are a lot of those flex though, very similar to the flex that we saw within the vitamin D milks. What that does tell me is that there is a benefit to using your ice cubes, really controlling your heat, or adding your milks within your oils or within your traced batters to ensure consistency and that you're not going to get this, you know? So if you don't want the flex occurring, you know, don't, don't do it this way. Now, I can see here where the soaps were coming in contact with the mold, and so it was going to be hotter at that point as opposed to the top of the soap that there's definitely some gelling going on so within all of this it definitely hit higher temperatures and it started a gel and you can see some glycerin rivers forming and whatnot but it did not do any sort of overheating or cracking or exploding out of the mold i do believe that if i had poured this into a column mold i probably would have experienced a volcano with this one it was very hot it was a very weird experience and it likely was going to volcano. But because I poured it into cavity molds, I reduced the heat overall throughout the entire column, if that makes sense. And so luckily that did not happen. So we did not end up with any weird pockets because I poured it overly thick or, you know, volcanoes in weird pockets because I poured it into a column. So both those are good, good tricks and tips for that. And overall, I do, as I said, want to test this, obviously also first for the lather, but more importantly, actually first, first for any sort of lie heavy, you know, bits. And so the first thing that I'm going to do also, obviously is going to be a break test. Usually in lie heavy soaps, they will break really easily because it, they'll, they'll just crumble. There's too much lye and not enough oils. So nothing's really staying into a solution. It was actually kind of a challenge to get that to break, but you see those pockets in there. That is specifically those darker bits, what I want to test to ensure that it is not lie heavy because obviously we do not want to be giving a lie heavy soap to anyone. We don't want to use it on our skin. We don't want anyone else to use it on theirs. Uh, is it dangerous? No. Is it irritating? Yeah. And do you want to be irritating? I mean, I'm irritating as a general rule, but I don't want my soaps to be that. You know what I mean? So I did go ahead and test these and the results were none lie heavy. I did not film any of that though. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. And also this is going to be a couple days after pouring. I am going to show you the end result of all of it. It is 
Definitely firm. It's a very firm bar, but it's so slippery. This thing fell out of my hand during this lather test like four times. So I hate that. Hate that for me. I would put an exfoliant in there to give it some sort of shot, I suppose. But whatever the evaporated milk is doing in there that's really giving more high concentrations, if that is also lending to why it's so darn slippery, it's a no for me. The lather is what we have been seeing with all of these milk soaps. Really beautiful, creamy lather that starts to just stand up on itself and creates almost a foam, a very thick consistency to it, which I do appreciate. Again, this would be a good benefit. I think milks across the board would be a really good benefit for a shave soap, for sure. I just don't know that I would ever play with evaporated soaps again, just because of A, the smell, which did ultimately go away, which is good, but two, just the weirdness of the overall lye solution. Okay, so let's get a couple things out of the way first. Is it a lie heavy bar? No. First off, it was very difficult to break. And so we've done tests before on the lie heavy bars and kind of what it looks like and all the crumbly and everything. But then when I did open it up, it had a very interesting laminated, almost laminated, you know, look about it with inside. And it had those very strange, you know, dots in it. Now, when I scooped the little pieces out of that to go ahead and test it to see if anything was uh, lie heavy, it was not. And so I think we've gone ahead and we've just confirmed that the little flex that we're seeing within this one as well as the flex that we saw within the pasteurized vitamin d milk you know that came out afterwards i think those are just kind of burned milk fats and so if you wanted to avoid that within your recipe obviously add that milk at traced batter or within your oils and soap it low with this, I also soaked it super high because I wanted to see what it could do. So it is not lie heavy. Is it overly super fatted? No, we're only talking about double the amount of fat from your vitamin D milk to your evaporated milk. So from like three to 4% to, you know, six to 8%, it's not that much of a difference. And so that super fat is not going to be a crazy amount like, you know, with yesterday's bar. And so we're not dealing with any problems there. Ultimately, the pour was fine. I did soap it hot but i did also make sure that it was poured at a very like near emulsion within all of that to ensure that it wasn't going to get overly hot i was surprised that it did not do anything past that like we did not have any issues with overheating within the molds nor did we with the coconut milk soap from yesterday and i think that's a product of a obviously not gelling it but two putting it into individual tray you know molds instead of doing an actual column because that heat is just going to build up at the core and eventually it's going to come out which we did see with a couple of our soaps within this series the lather very cool it's very creamy it's very lovely i love the extra protein content within that that's really giving it a nice big lather but it's interesting because i do surmise that it's the proteins that are causing that really nice lather but with the coconut milk from yesterday it's very little protein and so I guess the reason why we have that really creamy lather within the coconut milk is going to be coming from your carb content as well as the higher super fat. And so there's more than one way to get a really big, beautiful, almost foamy, stands up on itself lather. And so two different types of soap, essentially two different types of milk. Very, very cool. I like both of these soaps for sure. If I had to pick, I don't think I'm going to use evaporated milk for anything ever again but it was definitely a journey. That is a journey that you should tune in for because one of our Project Soapway winners for this brief did use evaporated milk and I am very interested to see what their ultimate experiences were. If they were like mine, if it was as much of a disaster as mine, if their lye solution looked as weird, where they even put it in, you know, all the things. So if you're interested in seeing that, you should definitely like and subscribe and comment and bell and all the things so you get fed me in your feed you know that sounds good all the things and you can come back and see one of the sudsers who won a project soapway you know thing with the evaporated milk that would be awesome speaking of sudsers hi you're awesome thank you for existing you guys are great i hope you guys are having an amazing weekend i am at the renaissance fair while you're seeing this and so i am sure that i'm having a great weekend or a terrible one and i'm very tired i don't know ren fairs can go either way most of the time you know anyway I'm out of here. I'll be back on Monday. We are doing the Project Soapway winners, starting with mine. We are going to be doing sweetened condensed milk for my soap. You definitely want to come back for that one. It's going to be fun. All of the rest of yous that exist out there, hello, hi, you exist. I am out of here, as I said, but I will see you guys all again on Monday for another round of Project Soapway Soapy Fun. Bye.